For 33 years, the screams of thousands of eager Halloween Horror Nights guests have been collected within the shadowy depths of Universal Orlando Resort. With each year that went by came a new set of frights for us to indulge in, bringing us to new worlds that reeled us in and never let us go. Realms of intense physical anguish, blood, guts, and gore but also spaces of psychological torment based on the darkest parts of the human imagination. We once again face another year of Halloween Horror Nights and the new stories that will forever live in our nightmares. But in order to understand those stories as they're told through the event, we have to go back and understand what brought us here. In this video, we're taking a deep dive into the backstories, history, and lore that has inspired this year's Halloween Horror Nights exploring the mythology behind the original haunted houses and scare zones, and examining their connections. The 33rd year of this beloved event proclaims Halloween Horror Nights as where horror lives, housing twisted terror at every turn. So before the monsters come from the shadows and fog floods the streets of Universal Studios Florida, let's look into the complete history and lore behind Halloween Horror Nights 33. While each haunted house and scare zone brings a new concept to be explored, there is an overarching idea that binds them all. This idea takes the form of two new iconic characters debuting at the event this year. As I alluded to earlier, 33 years worth of screams have been collected by the theme park itself, sinking below Universal Studios Florida and collecting in a dank underground facility. This terror manifests as a large eldritch entity, a cocoon that has remained dormant as it collects more screams. This year, the cocoon has cracked, opening the rift between the world we know and an alternative hellscape ruled by two guardians named Sinister and Surreal. These sisters embody the two different wings of horror, with Sinister focused on visceral physical pain and Surreal focused on mind-bending psychological terror. They have come through the rift into our world, hosting this year's Halloween Horror Nights and bringing forth stories that fit into their respective categories. However, they have stories of their own, seen through the scare zones of this year's event. In Duality of Fear, they make a grand entrance, summoning minions from both sides and allowing you to choose a sinister or surreal path that will take you deeper into the park. If one were to take Sinister's side of blood and carnage, they would end up in the Torture Fair, a space where modern-day torture enthusiasts recreate medieval torture methods with contemporary technology. Here, Sinister's bloodlust reigns supreme, and unsuspecting festival-goers are subjected to extreme physical punishment at this Renaissance fair gone wrong. But let's say one wishes to explore the more surreal side of things, and take the opposite path in Duality of Fear. This would lead them to the realm of the Demon Queens. This cosmic hellscape is populated by the aptly named Demon Queens, who serve Surreal by subjecting passersby to mind-melting terror. While they have no houses of their own, qualities of both Sinister and Surreal can be found all through the park, and as they reign over Universal Studios Florida for Halloween Horror Nights 33, let's take a look at what horrors they brought with them. Urban legends are something that can be found in every country and every culture. Some may be familiar with Bigfoot, the Loch Ness Monster, or even the Chupacabra. But just outside a nondescript Latin American village lies three terrifying legends and a force of evil that summons them. The first hails from Mexico and is a shape-shifting vampire witch named La Webuchi. The second is an old witch who shapeshifts into an owl-like creature known as La Lechuza. La Lechuza has the ability to mimic a baby's cry in order to lure victims into her lair. The third is a mysterious figure known as El Sibon. His backstory is a bit more complex, with a love affair against his father's wishes turning into a bloodbath that leaves his lover dead. In a fit of rage, he kills his father, and upon his grandfather's arrival, he is subjected to extreme torment and torture for his actions. After being mutilated by his grandfather, the boy is forced to carry a bag of his father's bones and roams in the woods, only to return with the sound of a distant whistle. All three of these monstros are summoned by Muerte, the spirit of death, who's looking to put you in an early grave. At this year's Halloween Horror Nights, three terrifying legends of Latin American tradition come forth to non-believers to prove their presence in Monstros, the Monsters of Latin America. I spoke very briefly about tradition, but perhaps there's no greater tradition than the birthday. 
Everyone has that one special birthday they will remember for the rest of their life. For the Barmy family, there's no question what that one special birthday was. On March 9th, 1984, the three Barmy triplets, Junior, Harmony, and Melody, turned nine years old. And to celebrate, they slaughtered their entire family in a very visceral fashion. From there, they left their home in an Ohio trailer park and roamed from place to place, city to city, living under bridges and hiding anywhere they could. However, every 10 years, they come out of the shadows to recreate that ninth birthday party and the grisly murders that made it so special for them. The story as we know it for these triplets of terror picks up in 2024, 40 years after the original incident. The triplets are back once again and are ready to unleash their chaotic carnage on the streets of Cradleton, Pennsylvania. From Pennsylvania, we jump to Progress County just before Halloween. The children at Progress County Public School are getting ready to take a field trip to Major Sweets Candy Factory, the nearby candy manufacturing plant that provides sweet treats for everyone in town. To most, Major Sweets is a wacky man with a top hat, mustache, and colorful fashion sense who just loves sweets. However, there's something beneath the surface that's a bit more sinister than they think. The truth is that as sweet as the candy is, it sours the spirits of those who eat it, especially the children of Progress County. It turns them into candy-coated killers who are just looking to consume more candy as they mow their way through terrified adults. And as one ventures through Major Sweet's candy factory as a chaperone to this field trip gone awry, they must navigate the colorful machinery as the trio of Major Sweet's, Miss Treats, and a disgruntled and mutilated factory worker named Taffy stalk the factory looking for more victims. However, if corrupted candy isn't sweet enough, it might be time to turn to human flesh instead. At least that's what sounds appealing to a hungry set of goblins on the day of their annual feast. Every goblin, high and low, celebrates the annual goblins feast, a holiday in which they lure in unsuspecting humans and cook them for a most marvelous meal in celebration of their defeat of humans and elves alike. However, it wouldn't just be goblins, but hobgoblins, orcs, trolls, witches, and even giants that would participate in this occasion. The most important part of the Goblin's Feast, though, is the mallet ceremony. This is when a goblin is given the opportunity to take the first whack of a steaming human skull and initiate the Feast of Human Flesh. The Goblin's Feast holiday and haunted house is a combination of fantastical tradition, food, and fun for goblin kind. That being said, though, when it comes to humans that were drawn into the Goblin's Feast tavern, it's a journey through the belly of the beast, and that beast is hungry for human meat. However, with beasts and monsters comes those who hunt them, and when it comes to monster hunters, no family is more well known than the Van Helsings. You may have heard of Abraham Van Helsing, the man whose death led to the downfall of Count Dracula. His children sought to continue what he started, with his son making it his mission to kill Dracula's daughter, who was seeking the Amun-Ra amulet to gain immense power and continue her own father's destiny. Hans Van Helsing would die on this quest, but his sister Saskia would use her grief to enact her revenge on Dracula's daughter and eliminate the bloodline for good. With her father's crossbow in hand, she sought to rid the world of monsters, carrying the weight of her family name on her shoulders. She would try to pick up the pieces left by Hans, tracking down the mummy princess guarding the amulet itself, but was unsuccessful in finishing the job. Her journey then led her to the moor south of Dracula's Manor, where she would be caught in a battle of monstrous forces. A large man stitched back to life once before lies dead once again. His bride, overcome with grief, confronts Saskia, and despite them operating in wholly unique realms of being, they understand their common enemy. They know that Dracula's daughter is assembling an army of monsters, and even though they are always vigilant of each other, they band together to put an end to the suffering once and for all. Universal Monsters Eternal Bloodlines is a tale of family, legacy, and revenge, putting unsuspecting guests right in the middle of this battle royale. But battle royales and family drama can be a bit heavy. Why not take a break with a movie? The Carry Drive-In is back open, and they're showing an all-new variety of creature features, over-the-top gore fests, and B-movies that will shock, surprise, and even scare the most hardened HHM vets. Between a summer camp terrorized by a killer shark, to a twisted take on Santa Claus, to Mardi Gras murders, and even mummy strippers, Slaughter Cinema 2 is an anthology story ripped from the silver 
screen. Finally, with our last house titled The Museum Deadly Exhibits, we make our way to an unexpected location for a terrifying tale, the Museum of International Folklore. Here they've just acquired a new exhibit for 2024, titled The Rotting Stone. However, after it's taken its place amongst the static exhibits of the museum, it begins to affect the surroundings. Within the Rotting Stone is a living parasite that corrupts and decays anywhere it resides. This decay has spread across the museum, melting and morphing the exhibits, and creating an atmosphere of hostility that you won't want to be caught dead in. And on the topic of museums and deadly exhibits, this year's tribute store is bringing a similar story to life. Titled The Wonders of the Ancient Garden and featuring a curious bat idol, this new exhibit coming to the Museum of Antiquities in New York brings both curiosity and controversy. Many protested its arrival, waving signs that read, Beware the Bat. But it did arrive, and once it did, different disasters and strange occurrences began to occur around the city. Port disasters, super ant invasions, warehouse flooding, all of which seem to be linked to the bat idol. Meanwhile, a mysterious bat-like figure stalks in the shadows, fueling further superstitions surrounding the exhibit. The store itself is a journey through a city destroyed by this bat artifact, taking you into a convenience store, sewer system, warehouse, and ending in a subway station. The Halloween Horror Nights tribute stores always tell unique and highly themed stories of their own, and this year we see parallels to the themes of the houses, but something all new within the store. And speaking of parallels and connections, what do these stories all have in common? Even though we have icons present at the event through Sinister and Surreal, they aren't as involved with the original stories as icons have been in previous years. And in general, the storytelling between the cosmic icons, all over the board originals, and punky event marketing has felt more disjointed than it has in previous years. And this has caused a lot of backlash for people that are kind of confused about the direction of the story this year. However, the duality represented through the two icons does make its way into the conceptual makeup of the haunted houses this year. Some houses like Monstros, Eternal Bloodlines, Goblin's Feast, and Triplets of Terror all focus on visceral horror, blood, guts, and gore, tying greater into the sinister side of the story. On the other hand, houses like Slaughter Cinema, The Museum, and Major Sweet's Candy Factory focus on the psychological horrors, leaning more into that surreal side. Even some of the IP houses I didn't talk about much, like Ghostbusters, Insidious, and A Quiet Place, also fit into these categories too, with the first two being more surreal, and the third being more sinister. There's also this notion of threes playing a role this year. This is Halloween Horror Nights 33, and Sinister and Surreal both have threes in their name. We have a trio of Monstros, we have a trio in Major Sweet's Candy Factory, and even Triplets of Terror. While in previous years the stories themselves may have had connecting elements or characters, this year we're seeing more of a conceptual connection more than anything else. But either way, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know down in the comments below what original HH and House or Scare Zone are you most excited for? Also, are you Team Sinister or Team Surreal? Honestly, I like Sinister, but I might be leaning more to Surreal. We'll have to see when we get to the event. I can't believe we're finally here at the event itself, and that's so exciting, and I just want to thank you for watching all of my HHN 33 prep videos. We've grown so much this year, and it's always crazy looking back at the past year of HHN videos, more speculating, things are getting announced, construction's happening. Of course, I can't wait to bring you coverage of the event itself. As this video is going out, I am in Stay and Scream right now for the first haunted house. Not sure what house I'm doing, but I'm in Stay and Scream. Regardless though, if you like this video and like videos about Halloween Horror Nights of the past, present, and future, be sure to let me know by leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. It would let me know you like videos like this one and you want me to make more of them. One more time, I want to thank you for watching this video. I will see you in the next one, which will be from the park. But until then, stay spooky and take care, everybody.